Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church of Weston. Um, we'll go over the announcements today. And obviously, there's no in-person church, and we don't know how long that's going to be. We can hope and pray that it doesn't last much longer. Um, some of our announcements, of course, there's no Sunday school today, and there's no FBC or Strive Youth this evening, and no women's prayer, prayer group. Uh, there's no uh, Lisa Simmons ABW this month either. Um, and there will be the Bible study on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock this week. A um, couple praises. Um, Mary Lou Bonnet is home after several weeks in the hospital. And um, Gary Posey is home after a successful uh, surgery this week. Um, also, Deanna Clark will be doing the uh, children's chat, and Josh and Sarah will have music for us also on uh, Facebook that you can uh, get on the link and listen to. Um, the prayer concerns for this week, of course, our list is huge and it continues to grow. If you could read that and pray for everybody on it, and if you need to make any changes to it, uh, call the church office. And if you could remember the family of uh, Jerry Miller, who passed away this week, and Jerry's uh, Ralph Miller's brother. Um, Harry Gross is still in Ruby and is waiting a transfer to uh, Mon Health Rehabilitation. Um, hopefully that'll happen soon. And if you could remember everybody who's uh, battling uh, COVID in our community and around the world. Um, we could go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for the everybody on our list. It grows, and we just pray that you would uh, help these people, touch them and heal them and give them comfort. We pray for COVID, that we would get a handle on it and it would slow down. It just seems to be growing so fast right now that we, we just can't control it. And we pray for anybody who has it. We pray for our health care workers, dear Lord, that you would help them. We know it's hard. And it keeps getting harder. And uh, we just pray that you would help them and, and give them strength and comfort. We pray for our military, dear Lord, that uh, you would keep them safe around the world. And we appreciate what they do. We also pray for our students that are back in school, dear Lord, that you would uh, keep them safe and, and uh, keep them from getting COVID as much as we can, dear Lord. And we pray that if they would, that you would heal them and give them comfort. We also pray for our government leaders, dear Lord, that, we, that they would make the right decisions for this and anything else that, that's going on in the world today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, just like the Lord's Prayer, as we usually do. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. First, let me uh, thank Steve for his part this morning. And somebody else can see how difficult it is to stand here and look out and just uh, see a couple faces. It's uh, it's it's something different. It's uh, not the easiest thing to do, but uh, we're glad that uh, those that are are with us on the uh, live stream this morning. Uh, we just appreciate you being with us. Uh, I know that most of you that are watching today or, or probably uh, would be here in the sanctuary if the doors were open. And then again, I know that there's many that uh, watch our service week, week to week that uh, 
Uh, we can count on you to be there on our live stream, and, and we appreciate you as well. And then there may be others that this is the, uh, the first time that uh, they've been shared with us on live stream. So whatever the situation is this morning, we're, we're glad that you're a part of the service with us. Uh, we have uh, temporarily halted our in-person services here at the church, and COVID is just uh, exploding in our area. We have so many people that uh, are affected by it now. I think just about every family has been touched in one way or another. Uh, it's been difficult for us to make that decision, though, but, uh, you know, in the last couple of months, our, our attendance here for worship service has, has grown back to probably 80 or 90 percent of, of what it was pre-COVID. And uh, our Sunday school was uh, holding steady. We would uh, started our uh, youth and children's Sunday school classes back again. Our Wednesday evening Bible study had uh, grown from just basically a handful to up near 20. And uh, we were beginning to, to look a lot like uh, the pre-COVID church again. So it was difficult for us to uh, close the doors again and, and just temporarily, but we, we felt that it was the best thing for us to do with the uh, resurgence that's uh, currently going on. Whether you're uh, vaccinated or not, whether you believe in masks or, or not, the fact remains that uh, people of all ages are uh, still uh, becoming very sick with this and uh, many are ending up in the hospitals and way too many are dying as well. We have uh, a few here in our church family that uh, have recently or, or currently battling the COVID uh, virus and uh, Kim and I are, are just coming off of it ourselves and still dealing with some of the uh, residual effects of that. Uh, we're doing well and uh, I'd just like to take a, just a moment and thank everybody uh, for their cards and, and letters, for their phone calls, uh, and particularly for your prayers while Kim and I were uh, dealing with the COVID ourselves. We, uh, we just can't ignore the uh, effects of COVID in our, our community and uh, that would come from a, a large outbreak and particularly if it would be within our church family. And obviously not everyone is, is going to agree with our decision to, to halt in-person services. And that, and that doesn't mean that either side is right or, or either side is wrong. But as Christians, as Christians, we, we need to be respectful of one another and we uh, must remain gracious in our attitudes as well. Please uh, continue to uh, keep our, our church and, and leaders in your prayer. And I just uh, ask that the Holy Spirit would, would dwell with each of you this morning, even as we uh, participate from, our, from your homes, that we might be united in, in one spirit as we worship God together this morning. I would put a little plug in for our, our Bible study this week. We are going to go back to Zoom. Uh, it's been... Uh, few months since we've done that uh, so I'll probably be a little rusty on the technical side but anyhow this week we will be back using zoom for our Bible study at 7 p.m. and uh, we'll be on lesson three in our study of first Peter uh, so if you'd like to be a part of that we would encourage you to uh, join us for our Bible study on Wednesday evening let's uh, bow for just a, a word of prayer dear Heavenly Father we're we're so thankful, Lord, to, to be able to come together, even, even Father, as, we, as we're not allowed to, as we're not able to be together here in your sanctuary, but Father, as we gather through technology, the technology that you give us, Father, and I just thank you that uh, we're able to, to share with one another. I just pray that your Holy Spirit would, would indwell with each one that's uh, watching this service today, as they sit in their homes and and uh, Father, I just pray that you would be round and about them. I just pray, Father, that we, you would reunite us together as your church. I just pray, Father, that your spirit would just hold us. And uh, Father, I just pray that we would become uni a unified church. I pray, Father, that we would uh, still, even though we're not together physically, Lord, 
I just pray that we would continue to serve you individually in our homes, in our communities, Father. Father, I just thank you for your love and your mercy, and I thank you for your grace. Father, I thank you for your son Jesus who died on the cross, who paid the price for each of our sins. Father, we just praise you and we love you. We ask that you would be with us through the, the remainder of our time together today. And all these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. This uh, morning, I'm going to continue with uh, part two of uh, my sermon that I began on the, the parable of the prodigal son. And uh, I titled that uh, sermon, the first part, Let the, Let the Celebration Begin. Now, it's, uh, it's been about a month since I shared part one with you. And uh, that just doesn't seem possible, but it's true. And I had no intention when I, when I announced that there would be a part two that uh, it would be a, a month before we would get back together and, and be able to share that with you. I was to the point that I was uh, beginning to wonder if uh, God was trying to tell me that uh, maybe I should forget part two. Uh, maybe that uh, there was something else I needed to speak about. But uh, today we're going to look at part two of uh, Let the Celebration Begin. And I know that many of you have, have probably even forgotten what part one was about, and I understand that. So I'm going to take just a moment to, to review that message uh, before we move forward with part two. At the time, we looked at the, the prodigal son who had uh, requested his inheritance from his father while he was still living. And although this, this action was uh, disrespectful and, and foolish on part of the younger son, the father granted the son's request out of love. And the son takes the, the proceeds of his inheritance and he, and he hits the town with it and he gets as far away from his father as he possibly can and, and he squanders everything that he had during just a, a short period of time. Before he knows it, he, he finds himself in the streets with, with empty pockets and, and with an empty stomach. And he hires himself out as an indentured servant. And he takes a job feeding pigs. And it's not long before he's, he's envious of the pigs for, for they're eating well and, and he's, he's starving to death. If we look at Luke 15, 17, it says that the, the son finally, he came to his senses. And this description of the, of the young son, that he came to his senses as symbolic of the, of the Holy Spirit that reminds us that God still loves us. He was, uh, he was able to see the errors of his way, and he, he makes plans for his return to his father. He's hesitant. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't know what his father will say. He doesn't know if he will receive him or, or run him off. And the, and the father would have every right to have done that, but uh, he doesn't do that. The father is, is, is so anxious to see the son. The father would have every right to, to refuse to receive him back. Just like when we turn our backs on God and, and we walk away. God has no obligation to, to accept us back, but through his grace and his mercy and his, his wonderful love, he's just waiting there with with open arms for us to return. In verse 18, it says that the, the son made plans of what he would say on his return. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So the son, he, he makes his way back to the father, but he's not the only one looking forward to this reunion. The father had been looking forward to it as well since the day that his son left. And he was anxious and he was looking and he was watching the horizon and, and he sees his son in the distance and he doesn't wait for him to come to him. He runs to him with open arms and with love. The father is filled with compassion just like God is for, for each one of us. And the father throws his, his arms around his son and he, and he kisses him and he's just overcome with joy. 
But the son, knowing that he's, he's unworthy of his father's love, he confesses his sin to his father. He confesses his unworthiness to be, to be called his son. But the, the father will have none of it. He commands the servants and the attendants to, to take care of the son's needs, and a, and a big feast is planned. The son who was dead is, is alive again. He that was lost has been found. There is absolutely every reason to celebrate. Let the celebration begin. We can see how our, our Heavenly Father in all of heaven, they celebrate when just the one lost soul returns to the fold. When we stray from our faith, when we, when we turn our back on God and, and instead walk into the world and, and to all of its influences, God is heartbroken, but he is always looking. He's always looking for our return, waiting with, with open arms to, to welcome us home. When one who is, has never known God, and he uh, finally responds to the, to the beckoning of the Holy Spirit, our Heavenly Father is again just, just waiting there with open arms. All of heaven rejoices when, when one of the lost is, is gathered back into the flock. If we look at Ezekiel 34, beginning with verse 11, it says, For this is what the sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they are scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. Now as we finish this review of part one of the, of the parable of the prodigal son, we can conclude that uh, God is always looking. He's always seeking his lost sheep. And whether we never knew God before or, or even if we knew God and for, for some reason we, we turned our back on him and, and we walked away and we left his love and inheritance, God is still seeking, still looking for our return. And our Heavenly Father is pleased and all of heaven celebrates. If you would, if uh, you have your Bibles with you this morning, Want to turn with me to, to Luke chapter 15, verses 25 through 32. I'll be reading from the NIV this morning. Luke 15, 25 through 32. Meanwhile, the, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. May God give us understanding this morning in the reading of his word. Now, I, I expect that a, a few of you that are watching this morning probably grew up as an only child. But then again, I, I would say that most of you had siblings in your life. And sibling rivalry is, is common in families, not just when we are young, but uh, in many cases, it extends to, to when we are in our adulthood. Sibling rivalry usually begins when, when one or more siblings believes that they, 
they aren't getting the attention that they deserve. And a lot of times envy and, and jealousy play as big motivators in, in this rivalry. It's one thing when this uh, occurs during our childhood and our adolescence, but it can become something much uglier and, and sinful as, as we become older. In the parable of the prodigal son, sibling rivalry is, is front and center, particularly with the, with the oldest son. But this resentment that is, that is felt by this older brother is much more than a, than a family relationship issue. It represents uh, something of greater importance to, to each Christian today. In verse 25, it says that the, the elder son was in the field, and as he came close to the house, he heard the music and excitement from within. He had mostly, more than likely, been working all day in the fields, as he, as he normally did for his father. And he asked one of the servants what was what was all the commotion about? And the servant tells him that his, his younger brother has returned safe and sound, and his father is preparing a banquet to celebrate. Could there have been a, a greater reason to, to celebrate? Now we get the impression the, uh, the news of the younger son's demise would have been the uh, only good news that the older son would appreciate. He was angry. He was so angry that he refused to go in the house and his father had to come outside and, and plead with him. But the son's response is telling. And in verse 29, he says this, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so that I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who is has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. Now this tells us that uh, nothing that the older son had done for his father during his lifetime was, was done out of love. He said he had been slaving. He did what he did not out of love, but rather for selfish reasons. The younger son had had blatantly disrespected his father when he sought his inheritance and fled. But what the older son was doing was just as disrespectful. He was just more patient than his younger brother. Neither brother did, did anything for their father out of love. Rather, they both sought to only pursue their own interests. For instance, the older son said that he was never permitted to even celebrate with a, a feast of a goat with his friends. Why did he refuse to, to celebrate with his own family, but then complain that he couldn't celebrate with those in the world? He wasn't interested in his family. He was interested in the same folly of the world that his younger brother was. The older brother continues to, to call out the sins of his brother while he ignores his own sins. Isn't it odd how we, we sometimes like to magnify the sins of others while at the same time minimizing our, our own indiscretions? The father reminds his, his oldest that everything he has, the son has as well. And he reminds him in verse 32, but we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found. The father's joy is, is not just for the physical return of this younger son, but his greatest joy comes from the fact that his son who was, who was dead to sin is now alive again spiritually. The older brother was like the was like the self-righteous Pharisee refusing to have anything to do with the, with the sinful younger brother. Scripture doesn't tell us the, the response of this brother to his father's pleading. We don't know if he, if he went with his father and, and joined the celebration, but really that, that isn't what's important to us today. The important thing for us this morning 
is how we can answer this question. Are you willing to join the celebration? Are you willing to welcome the lost brother and sister home? As we come to the end of this part two of let the celebration begin, what can we conclude from, from both parts as we, as we put them together? Well, we know that God is, is always seeking the, the lost sinners. He's focused on them. He pours out his love on them. He waits patiently for them to come to their senses, to repent of their sins, and come back to him. He doesn't go after them and, and force anyone to return. This has to be a, a decision of the heart. And it doesn't matter what they, they may have done in their past. You can never be so bad or you can never be gone so long that our Heavenly Father will, will not welcome you home. God wants nothing more than for sinners to, to see the error of their ways and, and just turn back to him so that his plan of salvation and, and redemption can be fulfilled. Now, when a sinner repents and, and becomes part of God's family, all of heaven erupts in joy and, and the celebration begins. But I'm, I'm afraid this morning that... Uh, it doesn't always work that way here on earth. Sometimes we even have difficulty celebrating within the church. Often we're, we're too busy jockeying for position in our own little groups and, and religious circles to even acknowledge a life that, is, that has been given over to Christ. We can get caught up in the church work and, and we can get caught up in our Christian faith to the point that we, that we completely forget what our mission is as a follower of Christ. Sometimes we can find ourselves wrongly focused on defining who is, who is welcome into our little groups or circle of friends or, or even the church. We're afraid that we might tarnish our own reputation if, to be seen with people who we believe just don't belong with us or... Uh, maybe who we think just don't measure up to our standards. And I know that, that most of you probably understand the basic process that our government has as it, it vets immigrants as they enter our country. And to vet means to, to screen and to assess and to evaluate. And we do this as a country to, to weed out the criminals and the terrorists and, and such that might possibly be a, a threat to our citizens. But some Christians have this, this misunderstanding that they are God's border patrol. They try to vet the sinners and they, you know, those that they think are undesirable. They judge them to be unworthy of God's forgiveness. They declare them to be unworthy of, of God's plan of salvation. These so-called Christians usually have a, a very high opinion of themselves. In their minds, their, their sins were minor. Their faith is stronger. And their righteousness is greater. They have the, the attitude of the Pharisees. And if we are acting like this this morning, we're fooling ourselves if we think that God has any joy in us. This behavior does, does not please God. God and, and all of heaven rejoice in the sinner who repents and, and turns back to God, regardless of man's opinion. We must rejoice as well. Now this morning, if... If God is speaking to you, I, I just pray that you will get on your knees if you're able and bow your head and, and ask him to forgive you of your Pharisee attitude. Ask him to lead you into a life of, of full obedience to his word and, and pray for strength and pray for godly wisdom and ask him to use you to guide the lost home. Again, I'm so glad this morning that each of you could be with us. And if God touched you today or if you would like to talk to me or if you'd just like me to, to pray for you, 
please leave a, a comment on our live stream or, or message me or call me. I want nothing more than to share the love of Christ with, with each of you today. Let us close with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word this morning. Father, I, I thank you for the parable of the prodigal son. And Father, I just thank you for the lessons that are there for, for each one of us. Father, I just, uh, I'm just so grateful that regardless if we've never known you or if we have and we've turned our back and walked away at some point in our lives, that you're still there looking over the horizon waiting for our return. Father, we just thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for, for loving us. And Father, if, if I or anyone here listening today has that attitude of the Pharisee, that attitude that of self-righteousness, Father, that attitude of vetting out those sinners that we, we think aren't worthy of your love, Father, I just pray that you would strike that attitude from each one of our hearts. Father, go with us this week. Father, I just pray that you would move in each one of us. And Father, even though we aren't meeting in, per in, in person, I just thank you and praise you and, and ask that you go with us and and your spirit would unite us, Father, that we might continue to do the work that you have given us. Father, we love you and, and we praise you this morning. And all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, as we thank you for sharing with us today. I thank Steve for coming in. I thank our uh, Alder Tech team of... Uh, Mike and Kathy Fisher, and, and my wife's here giving some moral support this morning. We just thank you for each one that's been a part of this, and, and we thank you particularly for sharing with us today. Again, if I can do anything for you, please just leave a comment or, or contact me through messenger or text or, or phone call. But this week, I just pray that each one of you would, would have God's favor and his protection and his healing in each you and your family. May God bless as you go about this week.